literally less than an hour back, Olmo called me and he said, Dr. Sarka, somebody missed a flight, so he's not coming. Another guy broke his hand. So there is a still opportunity to break your leg. Can you please come and talk? <laughs> I go, okay, that's a good opportunity for me because then I don't have to teach during the summer. I can take rest. So I said, okay, I'll come for it. So I'm here. So you have every opportunity to throw eggs or tomatoes, whatever you have, or whatever food you have left over, you can do it. Coming back to the really serious topic is that I'm going to talk about a technology I've been working for about five years. And we have invested about close to 20 man years into the project. Still, I'm not talking because it is a really an interesting technology that has got a lot of opportunity. We are really truly talking tens of millions of dollars. And guess what? The starting material is as mundane as broken glasses. If you go to any recycling center, I don't know if you can see it, you can hear the thing, this is broken glasses. You can pick it up literally for pennies a pound. And if you get only 10, 15, 20 pounds, you'll get it free. Now we get this one from there, what we call glass nanoparticle. We'll talk a little bit about it later. This one, typically all the nanomaterials are typically sold about, not in pounds, but in grams, and cost about $100 a gram, okay? However, we have developed a technology where you can sell it about $20 a pound in retail and unlike any other nanomaterials which, you, which is not available in tons or hundreds of pounds or thousands of pounds, we will be able to sell it for literally thousands of pounds. The biggest challenge of nanomaterial is that it is extremely expensive and there's not enough of it. I do not know how many of you know about nanotechnology. Just, just to get a quick feel, how many of you heard about the word nanotechnology, nanomaterial? Raise your hands. Okay. So here's the deal. Nano means you take a meter, divide into a billion pieces. Each piece is a nanometer. Your hair is about a million pieces of a meter which is, we call it micron, 50 micron typical. If you take your hair, split it into 1,000 pieces, that will become a nano, nanomaterial. Talk about splitting the hair. And that's why it is so expensive. The question is, what's the big deal about the nanomaterial? It is almost like Alice in Wonderland. We do not know what happens at that level, okay? The properties is totally different for the materials at that level. We have been used to understanding the materials in terms of chemical properties. Okay, plastic, plastic is plastic, steel is steel, metal is metal, right? And we always believe by definition, plastic is a lot weaker than the metals. But guess what? In the nano world, a nano polymer is as strong as steel. So all the concept changes. So that's why it is so important and so different. So whoever working on those areas, they understand that there is an application of technology is so much different, so much wide, that is a totally uh, a new world. Uh, people are look, looking on it, working on it, Literally, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, researchers, engineers, scientists are working on this area to find a new application. And I'm not going to talk more about it, detail about it. Only thing I can tell you, two things. Number one, nanomaterials are very expensive. 
and anybody can come up with a nanomaterial that can be sold less than hundred dollars and can be sold in thousands of pound is a gold rush. There is thousands of applications and depending upon the application your market will really vary. So, what I am going to do is talk about one application what you are talking about. If you take this nanomaterial use it as a smart sensor. In every restaurant anywhere in the country they use lot of grease oil fat they have to dump it properly. So, that they are not get mixed with the sewer system and they clog the system. Normally what is happening at this point of time is that every restaurant has to clean up their oil dump or the grease dump every other month and even if it is not needed they have to do it because they do not want to take chances. The system they use right now are passive. You can develop a smart sensor for each and every restaurant that will tell you exactly when you need to clean those oil fat and grease fog fat oil grease ok. Unlike arbitrarily depending on your liquid waste provider and we have built up a system here and that shows that it really works and I need to run the video please. I give the video, where is the video? Okay. Can you please run it? Yes. So, basically what we do is that with all this nano particles, nano glass particle that floats in the water, it hates water which is what you call hydrophobic, but it loves oil. So, what happens when you make a sensor, a box full of nano particle when you dump it into the trap, this trap, when you first time it just water, it basically it floats. So, it goes up. So, if you put 10 pounds up, yeah, that is the one, ok. Then once the water cross starts getting in, okay, so we made it deliberately blue just to show that water is coming. Now, this is the this trap we are talking about. Okay. And this uh, grease trap we can sell it for 300 dollars including the nano glass which is about 10 pound worth of nano particle. You are putting on mute right? <laughs> now, as it water pours in because of water hits uh, glass particle hits water so it will sort of float up. But as the oil starts coming in oil will absorb those nano particles. As the nanoparticles are absorbed, they need to start start sinking. Okay. Now, what is coming? You can clearly see the blue water. We deliberately made it blue. Okay. Now, as the as you can see this uh, next phase, the oil will start coming. Yes, you start with, you see the uh, gray brownish type of stuff on the left hand side, it is slowly coming up, you may not be able to see it yet, yeah here it is. Now oil has come in and once it comes in it will start sinking. As it starts sinking, you see finally what will happen all the LED lights will light up. So, the owner of the restaurant would not have to worry about it when you have to worry when this system will be filled up when you are need to ever uh, uh, clean it up. So, you are not at the mercy of your liquid waste provider you know exactly when it is. Did you see the light up. So, it is a very smart system and we are talking about every restaurant has to have it and good thing about this whole process is that it is a 
They trophy. They don't have to change anything. All have to change the lead. The lead. This is just one application. We have got dozens of other applications, and we are thinking about commercializing it pretty soon. Okay, and you can expand the market as much as you want. This is just one of the applications. Any question? Mm -hmm. And seeing if a restaurant had room for it, or if they understood the idea. Mm -hmm. I did not. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't well, get it. Have you gone to a restaurant yet? Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, no, no. All we are trying to do is that right now we are talking to the uh, all the executive directors of the CDs, Economic Development Corporation, Metal and Edinburgh, Wasleco. They are coming and they look at this the feasibility of it. If it works, then they will allow us to s install it in select restaurants. Then we slowly from there, if they like it, if the cost and everything else, then we will expand it to other things. We start from here. But we, have, we are already talking to this uh, uh, cities and they are very interested in that technology. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I can use a buzzer, I can use anything I want. It is just a simple technology. Yeah, you can do that. As such, we can go, yeah, that's a good point, really. We, what the, all you can do is that, you know, you don't have to do it even anything. You don't have to come. We can use a signal also so that you are, as she said rightly, it will, uh, you know, send a message to the text message or to your smartphone, and you know it's time to do it. Does it make it easier to dispose of uh, the juice after the nano particles? <laughs> thank you. And then you have gray water. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As such, yes. This actually we have built up now. That's what I told. I'm not going to talk about a whole lot about it. You are absolutely right. There's a whole ecosystem. That means not only we are allowing these things to happen in time, saving money in terms of servicing, on top of that, now we can use those fat, oil, and grease to develop what we call competitive briquette. And you can sell it because now we are getting those oil free, right? Now you can bond it. Once you bond it, you can use it as a briquette for your barbecue. And then you can recover your nano, nano glasses, you can repeat it. This is whole ecosystem. We have got a complete business plan. But we didn't, obvious, for obvious reasons, we didn't talk about more. But that's a smart observation. Yes. Is there something you could use like a, an extreme situation, like an oil spill or those kind of things you could use it? My gosh, I cannot keep any secret. <laughs> That's what I told you. I'm not going to talk about it. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yes. For any environmental disaster, this will be a fantastic application. Mm -hmm. This is, yes. And it can absorb not only oil, grease, kerosene, it absorbs also alcohols, acetone, breaking fluid, transmission fluid, you name it. Is there any uses in the sewage then? Mm -hmm. Are there any uses of it in handling sewage? Sorry, I don't know. You know, like uh, wastewater. Oh, sewage. Oh, all okay. right. Uh, we are not going in that direction yet. But this, uh, actually, let me back up. Uh, yes, we have other applications in the fracking industry for cleaning up water. That's another $100 million industry. We are not. We already have one of my students already graduated. He did his master's degree on that area. So they are, by the way, just for my comfort level, for you guys don't have too much excited about it, it's already patented, patent pending. We are already, we are along the line. And I knew this is a smart audience. If I talk, they'll, they'll understand everything. But yes, 
of our this is patent pending technology we are covering ourselves and that's why I did talk about for more than four years. You've got a large quantities of glass which normally go into landfills and there aren't that many. Exactly. Is it, is it usable uh, in the building materials perhaps as a binder and a reserve surface? Energy? Man, you guys are right. You are absolutely right. That's another idea. I told you, that's why I told you there are dozens of applications and in a sense, I am thankful for, for thankful for you guys and thank, thank you Alma for telling me because that really confirms what we have been thinking for the last few years. This really, really smart. The the the, the Achilles heel into the whole process was that the cost. We are we are building a machine in India. Actually, we have already built a machine in India, and that we can sell it here hundred thousand. But we are bringing the whole technology here. We are not going to do anything there but that uh, R&D is there and that machine can do build glass nanoparticle 100 pounds a day easy. Sorry you had a question? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. How is it to recapture? Okay, that's, so that's a good question. Actually, fortunately or unfortunately, we can we can soak the oil, but we cannot extract it. What we can do, we can extract the heat content of those oil and recover our glasses, but we cannot, not like a sponge, we cannot just again squeeze out the oil. No, that we cannot do. To dispose of the nanomaterial. No, I'll, I'll reuse it, recycle it. Keep reuse, keep recycling. Okay. And that's the, the, the during the process we do now during the whatever process we do, we may lose about 5, 10, 15, 20 percent, but the rest of it we can we'll be using it and keep recycling. Yes. Sorry, I didn't get it. I just wanted to add glass and use it again. It's similar in, in composition to asbestos, right? Asbestos is just a long silicon chain. And so that's, that's the problem with asbestos, right? If you inhale it, Yeah, the cost, cost is always the key issue. There are two issues. The, the reason the nanotechnology didn't take off, okay? There are two simple reasons. Number one is that cost. Number two, there's not enough of it. And that's the reason if, when you talk about nanotechnology, nanomaterial, the application is where cost is not an issue. One area is defense, okay, aerospace, those type of thing. The other area is medical device, drug delivery system, where we are talking about life and death. These are the key issues. That's why when this thing is going to happen, if we can come bring down the cost, when I'm talking about twenty dollars a pound in retail, my manufacturing cost will be less than five bucks. Okay, that's the huge, huge. This is definitely a disruptive technology. It's going to change everything. But actually, in a sense, that's a good point. Also talking about it, those all the entrepreneurs that take guys here let me tell you the the easy part is to develop an idea get a technical solution the harder part john knows it more than anybody else dr sergeon is that putting the business plan together convincing to the investors and then go from there we are working for almost a year it's still not there but and then again you know when it happens, the good thing is that you'll be making money sleeping in your sleep because somebody else will be working for it. So just as a techni technical entrepreneur, make sure you understand the business end of it, 
and you have to spend a lot of time. And you need a helping hand like vector surgeon. Another question? Use old Coke bottles, for example, yeah. mayonnaise jars. Yes. Yes. So then, that'll be a di an additional recycling area then mm -hmm. for the consumer. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you. You guys drink as much beer as possible. <laughs> <laughs> the, the glass have to be sorted by color, or can any color? No. That's here. Is in, in the show. You. There are all sorts of color, blue, amber, white, green, you name it. But when I get it, they're all white. It's another proper, uh, actually little, okay. This, the technology behind is that at that level, nano level, the light reflects in every possible direction. So you get all the color. So what you left are left with is really not any of this independent color, but you get the white or white. That's another. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Creating a new light for a painting or something. Excuse me. Could that be another application? Creating a paint that is completely white now, because whites yeah. are they use so much chemicals to create whites out of it. Actually, yeah. this this uh, this is white. Yeah. Now, really, the color really depicts on the light itself. Yeah. So. You know what I mean? Like the like this wall. wall. You can uh, you can already buy that. Yeah. Nanoparticle size uh, spheres of glass to use for uh, the white paint that is on the, the sides on the road to reflect light mm. back the direction it came. Something very similar to this. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.